Hello everyone, Bill Klein here, Extension Plant Pathologist with North Carolina State University. In this session we'll be talking about blueberry diseases and blueberry disease management. Before we talk about diseases, I'd like to say a word about backyard blueberries. Uh, in my experience, most home garden blueberry issues are cultural problems uh, rather than disease. So this may be a poor location, a lack of site preparation, the wrong species of blueberry, uh, maybe just a need for pruning. So uh, just keep in mind, your, your client may need help with a horticultural problem. Aside from cultural problems or environmental issues, uh, blueberry disease is caused by pathogens. And these include uh, the fungi, viruses, uh, bacteria, nematodes, uh, phytoplasmas, and parasitic plants. Some of these are quite rare on blueberries. Others are really common. So most of our time in this session will be spent on the fungi with a little bit of time also on viruses. Those seem to be the, the uh, two most common uh, categories of pathogen on uh, blueberry in the southeast. Blueberry plants live for a long time and once they're planted there are things that you just can't go back and fix. So I'd like you to consider the things uh, that are disease management strategies uh, prior to planting. Uh, you can avoid some diseases by your location, uh, just uh, being away from other blueberry farms. Uh, we've talked a lot uh, in previous sessions about site selection and site preparation. Uh, this can avoid a lot of root rot problems and, and other issues. Um, you have an opportunity to plant cultivars that are resistant to some diseases. And really importantly, you have an opportunity to start with clean planting stock. So the uh, risk of bringing in a disease uh, on the plant material is really uh, significant, especially with, with plant viruses, uh, with plant material from unknown sources. Uh, if you look at the image on the right, this is red ring spot virus uh, from infected nursery stock. This is a disease that will be there for the life of the planting uh, if you bring it in on the infected nursery material. So uh, one of the things that really needs to be considered before you uh, plant or before you buy plants. Disease management strategies used after planting include things like uh, cultural practices, pruning or cultivation, uh, sanitation, and how well you handle the fruit after it's harvested, for instance, and also chemical control, uh, fungicides for controlling pathogens and uh, insecticides for controlling uh, vectors that carry pathogens. And uh, the image here is uh, dormant uh, mummyberry sclerotia or pseudosclerotia in the winter. Uh, this is the overwintering stage of mummyberry disease. Uh, with, uh, with cultivation, you can bury these and uh, reduce the amount of mummyberry in the field. So that would be a, a cultural practice that, that uh, would reduce disease. So hopefully by the end of this session, we will have covered all aspects of integrated pest management or IPM, not just chemical control and what to spray to control the disease, but all the things that can be done to uh, reduce disease pressure in the field. Disease resistance, uh, clean plants, cultural controls, site preparation, it all factors in. One disease management concept is to start with clean plants. And we'll use the example mentioned earlier of blueberry red ring spot virus. This is a plant-borne virus. The, the vectors are not known, but we do know that it spreads uh, via cuttings from infected plants. So if a grower propagates uh, softwood cuttings or hardwood cuttings from a blueberry field that has red ring spot in it is likely to move the disease along with the new plants and spread it to the new field. So this is one to consider uh, when you're uh, buying plants or deciding whether to propagate your own versus purchasing plants. Uh, this is one easy way to avoid having a problem with a, a virus is to get a virus index to plant material from a certified nursery. One basic disease management practice for blueberries is uh, pruning to remove dead or diseased stems. The example here is blueberry stem blight, but there are a number of uh, fungi, uh, Ascomycete fungi, including Botryosphaeria and related uh, species, that colonize blueberry stems. And you can see in the image here, uh, the uh, fungal fruiting bodies are Pycnidia uh, on this uh, stem, and they're exuding spores. So this is a way that the fungus overwinters and uh, spreads its spores around the blueberry uh, planting. So 
Uh, anytime you can prune to remove uh, uh, weak or diseased or dead wood, uh, you're removing uh, disease organisms from the field. Pruning is something that is often skipped with young bushes, new plantings, but I think it's one of the most important times to prune. Uh, it's really critical that you remove flower buds to prevent overcropping. Uh, also, uh, winter pruning shapes the bush that you are, are uh, trying to form. Uh, but another important reason to prune is to remove uh, succulent uh, fall shoots that are damaged in uh, late fall, early winter uh, by cold temperatures. So these shoots uh, are, uh, are damaged and uh, become a uh, infection point or entry point for pathogens. Here's a close-up of the same plant. You can see these uh, curled uh, young shoots at the base of the bush that were damaged by cold weather in November. If those shoots persist until spring, uh, warm weather and uh, spring rains, they'll become infected uh, by uh, Botrysphyria, by the stimulite fungus, and that's just a super highway right down into the crown of the plant uh, for that pathogen to kill the entire bush. It's one of the reasons we see a lot of mortality in second and third year blueberry plantings. These cold injured shoots are susceptible to infection because they're damaged. So uh, Botrysphyria uh, stem blight is a wound pathogen and you can see uh, the image on the left, the brown pith in the center of the stem that indicates it's cold injured. So if you can uh, hand remove, prune out those uh, cold injured shoots in two and three year old fields, uh, you'll in the wintertime, you'll get rid of them before they can get infected. If cold injured shoots are not removed, you will see something like the shoot here in the center. Uh, so we've got three uh, shoots in this image. Uh, two of them are not infected. They're just showing the old cold injury and new shoots emerging next to it. The one in the center also has a cold injured shoot, but it became infected uh, by the Botrysphyria stem blight fungus and killed the uh, entire plant. So this is what we're trying to avoid by pruning out that cold damaged wood as soon as possible. We talked in an earlier session about site preparation and drainage as a as a good uh, general cultural practice, but it's also a disease management practice, uh, especially when Phytophthora root rot is present in a site. Uh, it's uh, around in a lot of places. It's a soil-borne uh, water mold, uh, Phytophthora cinnamomy, and it's a root rot disease. And once the uh, roots uh, are, are damaged, you start to see the symptoms in this image where the uh, blueberry leaves uh, yellow prematurely and fall off, and, uh, and the uh, pathogen uh, eventually can kill the plant. The uh, way to correct this long term is by improving drainage. This is an area of uh, poor growth, a low spot in the field. The uh, field was not tested for Phytophthora root rot, but it's uh, quite possible that that's part of what the uh, problem is here, where uh, you see the bushes uh, at the edges of the field uh, doing fairly well, and then the ones in the, uh, the low spot, uh, yellowing and dropping leaves. Avoiding root rot is one of those things that really has to be brought into consideration before you plant the field. So provisions for how the field is laid out and, and how it will drain, uh, bedding up of rows, uh, soil amendments to uh, help with drainage are all things that have to be done prior to planting. Uh, it's also worth considering whether a site is suitable for blueberries at all. Some clay soils are just really difficult to grow uh, blueberries on. I, I don't generally recommend uh, chemical control. There are some uh, some products out there for uh, for root rot um, uh, control, but I really uh, like to emphasize uh, drainage rather than uh, than chemicals because chemical control is not a permanent fix for root rot. Here's an example of a site where the field was planted fairly flat, and then an attempt was made to bed the rows after the bushes were planted. So the uh, plants were starting to, to die, and uh, after digging them up, what we discovered was that uh, the, the plants had been buried, that over time the uh, attempts to correct drainage had just piled so much soil on the plants that it began to kill them, and uh, root rot was still occurring down, down inside the bed. So in the image here, you see two yellow lines and a double pointed arrow between them. Uh, so the uh, bottom line shows the original planting depth. And then the top line, uh, where my pocket knife is, shows the depth to which the plant was buried over time. So once we dug it up, it became evident 
uh, why the planting was failing. To mention the uh, concepts of disease resistance and uh, fungicidal control of disease in the context of leaf spots. Uh, leaf spot diseases can really reduce yield on blueberries uh, in the year following disease. Uh, flower buds on blueberries form in the late summer and fall, and they form in the leaf axles. So if the leaves fall off uh, due to early uh, defoliation from leaf spots, then flower buds do not form. And if you don't have flower buds, then you don't have berries the next year. So uh, many blueberry uh, cultivars are resistant to leaf spot. Uh, most of the rabbit eyes seem to be fairly, fairly leaf spot resistant. But if you have a cultivar that does not have disease resistance, then uh, you have to manage leaf spots with, uh, with fungicides. And in the image on the right, you can see the uh, twig on the far right that's held its leaves. And you can see flower buds that are formed in the leaf axles. This would be uh, late summer, early fall. And then two other stems where the bushes defoliated prematurely and no flower buds were formed. So just a tremendous impact on the yield on these uh, bushes. In the next few slides, we'll talk about diseases that require fungicidal control. Uh, the examples will be uh, Exobacidium leaf and fruit spot, uh, mummyberry disease, and also uh, anthracnose fruit rot. Uh, fungicides are mostly protectants, so you need to be applying them before the symptoms appear. Uh, once, uh, once disease is evident, it's too late uh, to, to control diseases with fungicides. Uh, for instance, anthracnose fruit rot or ripe rot is best controlled with fungicides that are applied at bloom, and yet the disease manifests itself as a, as a fruit rot at harvest. I should also mention that, that there is some good resistance to anthracnose fruit rot in many cultivars. It's one of the diseases that uh, in North Carolina will cause us to not recommend a cultivar. If we find it's too susceptible to anthracnose fruit rot, we just will uh, we'll drop that from our list of, of recommended cultivars. First, I'd like to talk about Exobacidium maculosum. Uh, this is a Exobacidium species fairly recently described that's unique to blueberry. And these are the symptoms on the upper surface of the leaves. Uh, this is high bush uh, in North Carolina on May 24th. I think this is an important disease for us to discuss because it's quite widespread and it shows up a lot in homeowner uh, plantings, home, home garden plantings, and pick your owns as well. One of the really striking characteristics of, of Exobacidium is the uh, white fungal growth or mycelial mat that forms on the underside of the leaf spots. Uh, so uh, if you're looking at something that may be Exobacidium, flip the leaf over and, and look for this uh, this very distinctive characteristic of this disease. In addition to leaf symptoms, Exobacidium also causes uh, spots on fruit at harvest, and it uh, looks like a green spot on the side of the berry that does not ripen. So very uh, distinctive, very difficult to clean out of harvested fruit. So it's a very, uh, very visible and hard to exclude uh, defect in the in the fruit. Uh, it also causes a lot of fruit to fall off early. Uh, hit the ground before it ever gets picked. Fungicides are effective for controlling Exobacidium, but there was some really nice uh, unique work done at the University of Georgia that, that also determined that the fungus is overwintering on the surface of the plant. So uh, control can be achieved at the delayed dormant stage while the plant is uh, not quite at bud break. Um, if you get a thorough spray on with uh, plenty of water using a calcium polysulfide product, a lime sulfur, sulfur X, um, you can uh, really reduce the amount of disease that you see uh, in that year, even if that's the only spray that you put on. So uh, really uh, are encouraging growers to, to use the uh, calcium polysulfide products at delayed dormant. Now, those products are corrosive. They're hard to handle, hard to clean up. You can't really mix them with anything, and you have to be careful what you spray after them but it's a one-time spray that seems to be quite effective. Another fungal disease that, uh, that uh, relies heavily on fungicides for control is mummyberry. And uh, this uh, fungus uh, can occur in every year. Uh, it overwinters on the ground and emerges each spring from the old infected uh, fruit. It's a two-stage disease. So you have a primary leaf infection followed by a secondary fruit infection. And the image here 
uh, shows an infected berry. If you cut them open, you can actually see the fungus growing inside the berry uh, even before it starts to turn color. If we look at the disease cycle of mummy berry, we'll start at the upper left with the mummies in wintertime. And this is a the uh, sclerotia that is left after the rest of the berry has sloughed off. And what you wind up with is a, a little pumpkin-like uh, hollow structure that is that is fungal tissue that, that overwinters. It's uh, quite hard. Uh, and the mummies that overwinter uh, germinate in the spring. So you have apothecia at the, uh, at the center uh, top of this slide. You see these small uh, brown cup-shaped mushrooms that emerge from the mummies. These are the apothecia, and they are uh, full of ascospores. So uh, if you see these um, uh, in in uh, the spring, and you happen to catch it when when the uh, uh, rain just starts uh, splashing into those cups, you'll see just clouds of spores blowing up, sort of like a puffball uh, mushroom. And those spores uh, spread to the emerging leaf shoots. So once these ascospores infect leaf shoots, the leaf shoots are blighted, as you see in the upper right. And those blighted shoots produce their own spore stage, or a conidial or asexual spore stage that is um, fragrant and UV radiant. So those blighted leaf shoots are attractive to bees. The bees will land on those shoots, uh, get spores all over their bodies, and then fly to the open flowers. The spores, the conidia that are deposited on the stigmatic surface of those flowers, germinate and grow down the style, uh, just like a pollen grain uh, germinates and grows down to the ovaries. And then you have a long period where you don't see anything. From bloom until ripe fruit, there's, there's not much evidence of the infection. When the berries start to turn blue, then the infected berries, instead of turning blue, turn a sort of pale pink color and fall off. And the cycle uh, can, goes back around. Mummy berry control relies mostly on demethylation inhibitor fungicides, the DMIs, uh, some trade names, uh, Orbit, Indoor, Quash, Proline. Uh, this, this whole class has really good activity against this uh, pathogen. Uh, organic growers can use uh, Serenade Max. It's, it's not as effective as the DMIs, but uh, will provide some, some suppression of disease. Uh, spray timing is really critical from bud break uh, through bloom. Uh, so mummy berry sprays are, are applied uh, when leaf shoots emerge to protect the, uh, the shoots against the primary stage of the disease and also through bloom to protect the flowers from the secondary or, or fruit infection stage. Uh, spray coverage is, is really critical. And if you're trying to cover the leaf shoots, uh, you may have to respray fairly often. So if we look at uh, typical fungicide spray timing in coastal North Carolina, uh, one of the first things I would say is don't spray for any problem that you don't have. So uh, looking at this schedule, the February 28th spray for Exobacidium might not be necessary if that disease is not present in your field. The same thing for the sprays in March and April. If mummy berry is not present, uh, no need to apply those, uh, those fungicides. So uh, fungicide applications are an as-needed basis. Uh, the same would apply for the leaf spot sprays post-harvest. Some cultivars we know we have to uh, apply fungicides after harvest to retain the leaves. Uh, others we don't. So uh, the, the uh, fungicide use is, is very much based on which cultivars are susceptible and which diseases are present on your farm. Post-harvest cooling and proper handling are necessary to avoid having moldy blueberries in the grocery store. So our example of this uh, disease management uh, concept is anthracnose fruit rot or, or ripe rot. Uh, the three organisms that cause uh, post-harvest rot on blueberries most commonly are alternaria, uh, botrytis or gray mold, and uh, colitotrichum or, or ripe rot. 80% um, of the post-harvest rot that you see on blueberries in the grocery store occurs at the stem scar of the berry. And that means that the rot occurred after the berry was picked because the stem scar is not exposed until the berry is harvested. So uh, handling uh, of fruit uh, post-harvest is really critical for controlling these uh, post-harvest rots. 
And the way you manage this is by picking the berries when they're dry and by cooling them as quickly as possible. Anthracnose fruit rot of blueberry uh, results in soft, leaky berries, often with uh, orange spore masses on the surface of the fruit. Now, fruit rot pathogens can be identified by the spore shape and size. Uh, these are microscopic images of the spores of uh, ripe rot on the left and alternaria rot on the right. Uh, ripe rot has this uh, characteristic uh, spore that's shaped sort of like a rice grain. Uh, alternaria is a multi-celled spore, uh, club-shaped. So they're very distinct, and uh, you can distinguish the uh, different pathogens based on what the spores look like. This slide summarizes an experiment where we used those spores of Calototricum acutatum uh, to contaminate surfaces and observe the effect on fruit. So we had visibly healthy fruit that was sorted, packed, and held at seven days at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And the treatments that we applied were handling the fruit dry versus wet, and on clean versus contaminated surface. And there was a really uh, interesting experiment uh, because uh, we found out how important it was to handle the, the berries uh, dry from a uh, microbial standpoint. So you see under uh, field pack dry, these were berries that were picked straight into the consumer ready container and not handled again. And those stayed pretty clean for seven days. 1.5% uh, uh, ripe rot infection. If you drop down to the next line, look at the berries that were sorted dry. So whether the surface was clean or dirty didn't seem to matter a lot. As long as we didn't introduce moisture, the uh, berries did not decay. So 2% on the clean table, 3.6% uh, on the contaminated surface. So just not a lot of difference there and, and quite good fruit quality. Uh, where we ran into problems was where we introduced moisture. So when we handle berries wet or, or handle them over a wet surface, uh, we found 8.2% uh, rot, which is quite a bit, even on the clean surface. So that means that the berries had spores on them already, and just the addition of moisture uh, activated those spores and allowed them to germinate and infect the berries. Uh, where we really saw a tremendous amount of fruit rot was when we had uh, dirty uh, buckets, dirty uh, sorting surfaces that were, were contaminated with fungal spores, and we also had water. And at that point, uh, the the fruit rot uh, really was high, 63.5% of the berries. So, so just a disaster uh, with a contaminated surface and uh, wet handling. So to summarize uh, advice on handling blueberries to reduce rots, uh, first, you'd like to pick on time, every seven days or less, and pick all the ripe berries on the bush at each harvest date so there's no overripe fruit remaining on the bush. You like to handle berries dry. Uh, moisture is required for spore germination and infection, so dry fruit equals less rot. Stem scars are exposed at the time of picking, and this is a primary point uh, for infection. Uh, spores are always present in nature, so you must always cool the berries to prevent mold. And finally, uh, fungicides will not make up for overripe fruit or poor handling practices. Thank you for your attention. I hope this has been useful for you. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions, uh, please let me know and we'll try to get them answered. Thank you. Mm -hmm.